Hello again to the Blue Generation MOOC. In this video, I will talk in more detail about the blue economy subsector that is called maritime transport. I will explain its meaning and size in Europe and the possibilities it has to offer with regard to employment and training. What do we mean by maritime transport? In this Blue Generation MOOC, we gather under this term all activities concerning the transport of goods and passengers at sea or in inland waters, and also the activities and infrastructure of ports and harbours. Firstly, let us look closer at the transport of goods and passengers at sea. If measured by volume, over 80% of the world's merchandise is being carried by sea, and maritime transport is therefore essential for international trade and globalization. For Europe, maritime transport has been a catalyst for economic development and prosperity throughout its history. European companies need maritime transport and all related shipping services to compete globally. It ensures the security of supply of energy, food and commodities and provides the main vehicle for European imports and exports to the rest of the world. Almost 90% of Europe's external freight tr trade is seaborne. Maritime transport enables trade and contacts between all coastal European nations. Nearly 40% of all the freight exchanges between EU member states are conducted by sea. Overall, maritime transport industries are an important source of employment and income for the European economy. It accounted for 6% of the jobs, 12% of the GVA, and 16% of the profits in the total EU blue economy in 2017. Around 232,000 persons were directly employed in this sector. As in most of the sectors in the blue economy, indirect related jobs can double or triple that number. Total wages and salaries amounted to 8.6 billion euros and the annual average wage was an estimated at 36,900 euros. The gross value, GVA, generated by the sector amounted to just over 21.9 billion euros. Italy leads in terms of employment, accounting for 22% of the total maritime transport jobs, but is third in terms of GVA at 15%. Germany accounted for 21% of the sector's GVA and 15% of the jobs, followed by the Netherlands with 10% of the employment and 6% of the GVA and Denmark with 8% of the jobs and 13% of the GVA. Another important branch in maritime transport are port and harbour activities and infrastructures. Europe's ports are important gateways that link the European inland transport network to the rest of the world. Europe has some of the finest port facilities in the world. Ports play an equally important role to support the exchange of goods within the eternal market and in linking islands and remote regions to the European mainland. Ports are not only great for moving goods around, they also provide the infrastructure for passenger transport, which includes ferries as well as cruise ships. 400 million passengers embark and disembark in European ports every year and this important subsector creates revenue and employment in the maritime transport sector 
for captains, crews and engineers, as well as in the tourism sector for entertainment, provisions and accommodation on board. Ports generate lots of employment. 1.5 million workers are employed and the same number again are em employed indirectly across EU maritime member states. This corresponds to 14% of the total jobs in the European blue economy and 19% of the GVA. The average annual wage was estimated at around €36,000. Europe's busiest port in Rotterdam in the Netherlands, with around 11% of the total cargo handled in 2017, followed by Antwerp, Hamburg and Amsterdam. Germany leads European port activities in terms of employment with 20% and GVA at 19%. It is followed by France and the Netherlands. If we go into a bit more detail, we can identify various subsectors in maritime transport and port activities. Maritime transport can be subdivided firstly into sea and coastal passenger water transport and sea and coastal freight water transport and secondly into inland passenger water transport and inland freight and water transport and finally the renting and leasing of water transport equipment such as ferries ocean ships and river barges. In terms of employment, sea and coastal transport accounts for 76% of the jobs, 39% for passenger and 37% for freight transport. Inland transport generates a further 19% of the jobs. The renting of equipment accounts for the remaining 5% of the jobs. Most of the value added is generated by sea and coastal freight transport with 50%, followed by sea and coastal passenger transport with 35%. And the renting of equipment as for investment, sea and coastal freight transport received the most investment at 61.4%, followed by sea and coastal passenger transport at 21.4%. As for port activities and infrastructures, we can differentiate various subsectors as warehousing and storage, cargo handling, the construction of infrastructures and service activities. The bulk of the employment, 56%, is in warehousing, with 32,000 direct jobs in 2017. Service activities accounted for a further 22%, followed by infrastructure projects and cargo handling. Similarly to employment, most of the value added is generated in warehousing and storage, accounting for 42% of the GVA, followed by service activities at 38%, cargo handling and construction projects. Most of the investments went to service activities with 53%. So what different job opportunities are there? In passenger and cargo transport, you can work as a seafarer, either as a captain, which is the highest position, in the deck department, or as an officer, or as a mate, or in the engineering and machine department. These titles are very similar throughout Europe, as the companies operating in the maritime transport are international and the IMO, the International Maritime Organization, has implemented international standards and regulations which have to be followed by all recognized training institutions. There are also many maritime academies in the different coastal states that offer the possibility to study for specific maritime titles and to complete various bachelor degrees. 
For example, Spain offers the bachelor's degree in nautical engineering and maritime transport, which includes all the main titles in the merchant na navy, but also allows the graduate to work in a multitude of shore-based jobs. There are many private sea schools in coastal areas that offer studies for specific titles in a range of VET studies for different seafarer positions. The European maritime industry suffers from a lack of European seafarers, in particular officers. This shortage is likely to increase in the coming years to the detriment of the maritime industry, which needs young people to enter the sector and develop maritime expertise and experience. The construction of infrastructure and infrastructure project require skilled professionals, ranging from workers to engineers. There are many maritime related engineering studies with civil engineering, industrial engineering, naval or maritime engineering being the most sought after. In warehousing, storage and cargo activities, there are many different jobs related to loading and unloading of freight and also those related to logistics or warehouse management. These jobs usually don't require formal training and can be done with on-the-job training or short-term VET training. There are also many onshore jobs in trade and commerce, insurance companies, administration, service providers and IT services. The qualifications needed vary depending on the category of the job. Especially in the transport sector, professionals related to economics are wanted, for example, bachelors with a degree in international commerce and trade are in high demand by employers. IT professionals are also highly sought after and a range of VET trainings to university studies provide the necessary training possibilities. Main developments in the maritime transport in recent years are related to the continuous increase in the ship sizes. This concerns all ship types, tankers and other container carriers, but also cruise ships. Additionally, the fast-moving development of unmanned, remote-controlled and autonomous ships is rev revolutionising the industry. This increases the ship sizes and has been possible thanks to technological improvements. These new forms of maritime transport have significantly affected the shipbuilding and port sector, as well as their surrounding infrastructures, for example, road and rail connections. Port activities also provide the basic infrastructure for many other sectors, including fishing, transport, marine extraction of minerals, oil and gas, marine renewable energy, or maritime tourism. In this context, Ports may act as facilitators of economic and trade development for their hinterland. Due to technological development, the number of some specific jobs, such as crews on board ships or cargo ships, may decrease in the coming years. But this development also opens new and exciting working possibilities in the field. For example, remote drone handlers that check autonomous ships for problems. There won't be less cargo and passengers transported. On the contrary, maritime transport is expected to increase in the coming years. Ports and related activities will keep playing a pivotal role in trade and all other sectors depending on them. This means the sector will be a stable provider of job opportunities and economic development. It is forecast that the number of sea-based jobs in the passenger 
transports sector, especially on cruise ships and the land-based jobs in the cargo transport and handling sectors will increase significantly in the coming years.